So this is the Japanese version of Spider-Man. Not a lot of people knew about this or know about this. I only discovered that this existed when SH Figuarts went and released their version of the Japanese Spider-Man. And now Hasbro is releasing theirs from Marvel Legends in tribute of the Beyond Amazing 60th anniversary of Spider-Man that they've been doing this year. There is a side image on the side of the box. Here is the other side. And then here is the back side of the box showing the figure and what he comes with. All right, he stands at about six and a quarter inches tall. And one of the first things that I noticed when I opened it is how the color of the red is drastically different than what the box art shows here. So if I get the box back in frame here, you can see how much darker the red and blue are on the box. So the figure itself is more of like a orangey reddish color. So really, I'm not sure. I think the brighter color seems to be a little bit more accurate. I never watched the Spider-Man Japanese version. If anything, this does seem to be a little bit closer to the actual TV show, but I think it should be a tad bit darker and not so bright. Um, I don't know. You tell me. Uh, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. It does seem like it's an orangey reddish color though. So let me know your thoughts down below. Now he does come with a web effect here, which is the same one we've seen plenty of times before. And then we have these web effects, which we've seen before too, but I really like these because you can stick these on walls or on people. Now one quick note about these webbings, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the Japanese Spider-Man does not actually shoot web fluid or webs from his body. Um, I believe it's a net that he shoots and like a rope. Now I don't know if it's because the effects back then were just so bad um, and they're actually meant to be webs or if there were actually ropes and nets. So somebody can clarify that down below. But from what I've seen, and I even looked it up on YouTube, um, I saw nets and, and ropes. So uh, these don't really make sense if that's the case, unless they're trying to play these off as ropes and nets, which I don't think it you know worked out. And then we do get a pair of fists as an alternate set of hands for the ones that he has right now, which are these open hands. And these are meant to do his little pose that he does. He does something like this, so that's what these hands are really meant for. He is not your traditional Spider-Man that has, you know, a little web sling in hand or anything. I think from my understanding, he shoots it out of this little wristband. Uh, but again, I am not educated on this show. I've never seen this show. I have seen some screenshots, though, where he is using an actual gun. So that's interesting. So if you have a gun lying around, you really can't uh, get him to hold it. He doesn't have a trigger finger, but maybe you can kind of get him to grasp one. So maybe something like this. This one comes from a G.I. Joe figure I have lying around. And you can get it. You can finesse it. You know, you can finesse it for sure. So here's the face sculpt up close. And the paintwork is done pretty clean. I like the line work. I don't see any issues so far. The spider logo on the torso came out very clean. And going down to the waist here, we do get the pinless elbows. And then we get this little wristband, which does say Spider Man on it. You can kind of make that out. I like the detail on this thing. It's painted very nicely. This rotates too. So there's that. You get the pinless knees. And then here's some more line work, which is all painted on there. Uh, I guess this would be an issue, right? This little gap between this line and that line. Kind of like it didn't connect. So, but for the most part, I mean, that's the only thing I could find. Slight nick on the back logo. You can see a little black mark right there. Not the biggest deal in the world. I've seen worse. So overall, not too bad. We do get a peg hole, though, on the back side. So that is pretty big. So keep that in mind. But there's your real close look at Spidey. And if you take a closer look at the neck area right here in the middle, you can kind of see the lines don't connect. Uh, so that is an issue there. As soon as I praise the figure with having clean line work, I, <laughs> I noticed that right there. It's very hard to notice at first, though. So at least there's that. It's not super noticeable. I don't know if it's just my specific figure or if it's all of them. But eh, that kind of bugs me now that I see it. The lines should connect, so that's unfortunate. All right, so they did give him a ball-jointed hinge, so I can't really get him to head tilt, unfortunately. That's what I really like to do. Um, so head tilting's not going to happen, but he will look all the way up. 
he will look all the way down. Limes are going to go all the way around. And they do go in and out about this far. We get a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. And both elbows and knees are very tight joints too. Uh, we get a swivel at the wrist with a hinge. Ab crunch at the torso. Does not make sounds, so that's awesome. And it's super tight, not loose. We get a waist swivel. Legs are going to go forward. They go back in and out about this far. Thigh swivel, double jointed knees. This would have been a great spot to do a boot cut shin swivel, but there is no boot cut shin swivel, unfortunately. We do get an ankle hinge and then a rocker and no swivel. Also, as you can see, they did paint the bottom of the feet. So here he is compared next to the Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man figure, and he does stand shorter than the Japanese Spider-Man. Next here he is next to the Iron Spider, just to get another Spider-Man in there. He does stand shorter as well. So overall, the height on the Japanese Spider-Man tends to be a little taller than most Spider-Man. And I won't go too crazy and put in every single Spider-Man that's recently released, but I'll throw in one more. Here is Spider-Man Noir from Into the Spider-Verse, and he stands taller, finally. All right, and that's going to conclude my review of the Japanese Spider-Man figure from Marvel Legends by Hasbro. Overall, I think this is a decent offering. Um, I know it's not really meant for everyone. Not a lot of people really know about this version of Spider-Man. But the ones that do might appreciate this one, especially since the SH Figuarts one costs more and it's no longer available. And I, I believe it's even um, going up in price. So... This is the only affordable option, and it's not a terrible one. It's not perfect by any means. I wish a few things were different. I think the red needs to be a little bit darker, but in some lightings, it looks okay. In some lightings, it doesn't. And then, of course, some of his gadgets, such as the ropes and nets, are not included in this. So it's just a few things that are missing. But overall, it's not a terrible figure. And I do appreciate that they found a way to release this figure in Marvel Legends. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And also, while you're down there, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button. And consider subscribing if you have not done so already. As always, everyone, take care, take it easy, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.